Hey there, all you good people. I'm Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. Are you excited? Well, I sure am, because today we get to look at something the Apple II has needed for years. A universal power supply kit that works in virtually every Apple II and Apple III imaginable. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. I've worked in the computer industry for years, and the one thing that's constant, aside from user error, is crappy power supplies. It doesn't matter how well they're made, because they always fail. Now, the Apple II line is no exception to this. Bad supplies are like a cancer on our beloved old 8-bit fruit. They cause a whole range of problems, like instability, failure to power on, and worst case scenarios, they blow up taking the rest of the Apple II with it. The Apple II community has been replete with solutions to the problem. From folks trying to repair original supplies, old PC power supplies cobbled together with dongles, all the way up to custom hack jobs. The one thing they all have in common, though, is that they're half measures. They're usually ugly, inefficient, or provide dirty power signals to the Apple. Ultimate Micro is no stranger to this problem. They've been doing custom power supply solutions for years, starting with rebuild services back in 2005, and then later using customized server power supplies as replacements. While developing some of their other products, they noticed that Apple's running their customized supplies didn't have nearly as many issues in testing. That's when the idea was born to create a single solution that works for everyone, that is insanely easy to install, and will save the lives of many of our beloved 8-bit friends. Today, I have great news. Ultimate Micro has released their Apple II Universal Power Supply Kit. It allows you to keep your original power supply chassis unmodified, reduces heat, increases efficiency, provides clean power, and is a virtual breeze to install. Let's go save some Apple, shall we? Now we're going to take a look at everything that comes in the kit. First is the Universal PSU. This is a medical grade supply which provides superior performance to any Apple supply. It's designed for longevity and performance, so it should last over a decade. On the supply are 5 and 8 position MTA156 connectors for connecting the bare AC and DC power leads to the supply. More on that later. Next is a universal PCB. This is the magic glue that allows the PSU to fit inside any Apple II or Apple III supply chassis. Two Wago splices, two Scotch lock crimp splices, and two male pin and housing connectors are included. These are used to extend the length of the AC wires should they be too short. Four T-tap crimp connectors and four male spade connectors are included in case you want to split your DC load off to any specialized use. This is very handy for the tinkerers out there. The 20 AWG yellow connector is included in case your supply has very thin AC wires. This helps make a better connection to those wires. The 5 position and 8 position strain relief caps for the AC and DC headers are pretty obvious. The four normal hex standoffs are used to hold the PSU to the PCB, and an extra hex standoff is included to place under the PCB as extra support. Finally, enough M3 Phillips screws are in the kit to hold everything together. The install guide that comes with the kit is pretty robust and has instructions for every Apple II and Apple III supply out there. No matter what computer you got, the instructions have you covered. Full disclosure, I'm a beta tester for this kit and I helped write the instructions, so there might be a little bit of bias there, but in my opinion, the instructions are pretty good. Alright, so here we have the Ultimate uh, Micro Universal PCB. Um, this is really the... Uh, special magic right here that makes the entire kit work. Uh, what this thing allows you to do is it allows you to uh, mount the uh, the universal power supply kit in any Apple II or Apple III uh, power supply chassis, basically replacing the entire guts of your power supply. Um, this has a lot of special little features. Um, right along here and right along here are breaker spots. Uh, this allows you to break it there or break it there to modify the board to fit all the different chassis. Uh, additionally, uh, you've got your regular mount points here for the uh, the actual power supply uh, power supply unit itself. It just mounts to that, and then all over the place there and down the middle here and over on the sides, all over the place, you've got different mount holes that are marked very clearly. 
that show you uh, where this mounts to your chassis. So basically you take the guts out, put that all together, stick that in your chassis and uh, put it all together and you have a completely brand new power supply with absolutely better specs, cleaner power and everything than your original supply. Now we're going to go ahead and take a, uh, take a uh, quick chance at this. We're going to uh, take a power supply apart stick this guy in it and do the whole build process uh, right here on camera for you. Let's check it out. All right, now it is time to get to work. Now, here we have my Apple II GS uh, power supply here. We're going to take this part and uh, put this thing together right in front of your eyes. Now, one of the biggest, thing, or biggest things to keep in mind when doing these power supplies is that the, uh, the, the process is basically the same for every single power supply you might do. It's basically a, uh, there's an eight step process. It, uh, basically it uh, involves removing the outer chassis, uh, unscrewing the old uh, PCB, detaching the AC and DC cables, uh, usually by cutting them. You can desolder them if you want to try to reverse this later, but you cut them as close to the original PCB as possible. And then you remove all that, uh, all that old gunk out of there. Uh, and then you've got to modify the uh, new universal PCB to match your chassis. In many cases, you don't have to do any modification, but, you know, if you have to do that, you do that. And then you install the new universal PCB in your chassis with, uh, with the uh, power supply attached and everything. And then you attach all your AC-DC cables using the uh, little crimp connectors you get with it. And then you reinstall the outer chassis, and you should be good to go. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started here. So first we got to... Uh, take the uh, outer chassis off here and get inside the guts. So in this one, you know, the screws are on the uh, sides of it here. There's one screw, two, two on the other side. Oh, come on here, work with me. Three. Four. All right, now we need to take this top piece off. Now this can be a pain in the butt, but there we go. We are inside the guts of that supply. That's awesome. Set the lid to the side. Now we got to uh, get in here and uh, in this specific supply, it's got four screws. It's got one here, 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 and the other one is all the way hidden back underneath the, uh, the inductor there. Um, and we have to get those screws out uh, first to uh, get this apart. So let's do that next. All right. Here, let's put these screws on top of that so I know what they go to. One screw out. Oh, come out of there, you. There's the second one. Third one is right here. And the fourth supply is, oops, I lost a nub in there. Okay, the fourth uh, screw is way, way back in here. Oh, come on. This one is being a little belligerent. Proving a little difficult to get to. There we go. All those are removed. Now, as you can see, it is loose inside here, so we can start playing around with stuff. Uh, now, uh, the next step we uh, do on this specific uh, supply is uh, separating the AC wires from the PCB. Um, and in all of these supplies, the idea is really to get them cut as close to the original PCB as, as, as possible so that you do not have enough lead to work with, uh, you know, when you're snapping it back into to the crimp connectors there. So let's see if we can, uh, we can get, that, uh, get that done. Okay, so let's look and see. The AC wires on this PCB are all the way up here. This is ground, and this is the feed lead coming from the back. So we need to snip these two wires right there. Now this may prove a little bit difficult to do with it in here. So we're going to go ahead and 
See if we can get this out of here. Apparently I'm a dumb dumb and I can't get this thing out of here. Give me just a second. So there's our AC wires. So the idea is you need to snip those as close to the board as you can. We got some silicone glue in there holding that in place. So let's yank on that. All right. And there is the whole thing out. Now, um, the kit I received comes with a pre-made DC cable. So uh, at this point, that would be the last part of that step. Now, um, if you wanted to manufacture your own cable or reuse your existing connector or whatever, um, this, the steps uh, indicate that you should be cutting the DC end off here as close to the PCB, the original PCB as possible, so you can attach it to the, uh, to the connector. But we're not going to worry about that. Now we got to mount the uh, new power supply to the board here. And one of the big steps you got to do uh, when you're doing that is that um, the supply, in order to fit everything correctly, uh, needs to have the, uh, the uh, oh gosh, the headers, that's what those things are called. The brass headers moved up to these different positions here to match the supply. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now that we got those uh, brass standoffs or those brass headers removed and uh, moved up, we have another one we got to install up here that helps balance the uh, the weight and the pressure on the board. So we'll go ahead and do that next. Now that we have the standoff installed, we can go ahead and install the entire PCB into the enclosure. Alright, now we got all four of our mount screws in place there. So now we can uh, go ahead and mount the actual power supply unit inside here. Now it's got two sides, very important. It's got the AC side and the DC side. And uh, basically you want to mount this in here so that the AC side is uh, closest to the AC end of the power supply. Pretty straightforward. Now let's get that done. As you can see, it fits in there like a champ, nice and sm snug right there on all of those little headers. This step is pretty easy. Basically, what we have to do is uh, take the hot wire, uh, which is the black wire on this power supply, which will be black or brown, and it goes into position one uh, right here on the five uh, five port connector there. And uh, then the, the white or blue wire, in this case it's blue, the neutral wire goes smack in the center right in the middle there. Basically you just use a flat blade screwdriver and you pop it in there and press it down. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Now that we got that on there, we put the strain relief cap on. It's this little thing right here. A little bit better angle there. Pops right on. Cool. Now in my case, the next step is pretty simple. We just attach the uh, pre-made DC uh, cable to here, right on there. Run it out through this grommet here, out the side of the uh, the uh, chassis there, and we're good to go. Now, uh, if you didn't opt to purchase this and uh, wanted to make one, you know, from the original power supply uh, power supply cable, which is you know this guy here, you'd be snipping this off here, and then using uh, some of the supplied pieces. For example, some of the supplied pieces like that to make your own connector there. So um, now this is pretty easy. We're just going to skip right through this and uh, show how this gets uh, gets put in there. 
important little step here, making sure to get the grommet in the right direction uh, to go out the grommet hole there. You don't want to put that on backwards and then realize, oh gosh, I gotta, I gotta put that, I gotta take that off and put that back on. So make sure you get that step right or you'll, you know, you'll have a little bit of a, a little bit of a bad day on your hands. Look at that lickety split. It's all installed there. The grommet's in there and it is a thing of beauty. All that's left now is to put the top on it, put it in our Apple II GS, power it up and see what we get. Now we have it all installed. It's all put back together. And now we have the moment of truth. Will it turn on? Let's find out. Look at that. We have phenomenal magic. It works just a treat. Isn't this thing just the best? The installation process is fairly easy and requires no soldering. The hardest part is dealing with the DC cable grommet. Now, I'm pretty dense and I figured it out, so I don't see anyone having a problem with this. I highly suggest, though, that you take apart your supply, lay out all your parts, and read through the instructions before starting. One special note about the kit, in order to complete the DC common to ground connection, the entire unit needs to be fully mounted in the computer. This is an edge case that won't affect most people, but I feel obligated to mention it. The kit comes with the option to either reuse the original DC output cable from your own supply, or to purchase a pre-made cable. I suggest purchasing the pre-made cable to make it even easier to install. The supply will be available for pre-order on April 27, 2016 to help Ultimate Micro get the right balance of parts on hand. The expected price is to be somewhere around $99 plus shipping. They aim to have kits going out in June and have stock on hand for Kansas Fest 2016. Folks who opt to take delivery at KFest can get their supplies for $90. Bucks. I'm told they're even going to be doing a power supply upgrade session at KFest during the Solder Fest session, so if you're going this year, keep an eye out. If you're an Apple II lover but don't have the mad hacking skills, don't worry, because an upgrade service will be offered on the Ultimate Micro Store for $149. Final thoughts? This is one of the most important upgrades released for the Apple II since the compact flash adapters came on the scene. Finally, we have an easy and elegant way to save our beloved apples from the dustbin. If you have an old apple laying around that isn't working right, you might want to try out Ultimate Micro's Universal Power Supply Kit. You may just find that you've saved a piece of computing history. One last thing, I wanted to mention that fellow Apple II enthusiast Chris Torrance has made his own build and demo video of the Universal Power Supply Kit, so click on the embed there to check it out. Well, that's all for today's video. I really hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button or subscribe. And remember, 8 bits are all you need. The board is really simple. It's easy to figure out. There's lots of markings on it. So you can quickly figure out which holes you need to use, uh, which power supply. And it's great to be able to replace your old power supply with something that's a lot more modern and that'll connect. Sorry, no flashbacks. You'll have to live with me. Actors are expensive. One boring spring weekend in 1994, I did what kids from the bad part of town did. I went to the gas station and used my saved up lunch money for snacks. It's seven bits. Seven?